Oh! 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 All right. Welcome back to season three, Monster Chiller Horror Theater. I am Eighth Dance Stanadu, host of the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo, and I am joined as usual by my good friends, Jim. Jim Goddard. That's I'm I'm here because I'm in the goddamn club, aren't I? You're in the club, the <laughs> Monster Squad, man. Yeah. Who doesn't? Who? Uh, we're all in the Monster Squad, right? I mean, that's just the way it works. All right, Jumpin' Jack Hall. Sup, dudes. And finally, the man who brings it all together, the man who explains it all to us. We got Nick Nick Boxer. Greetings and salutations. All right. Well, I'm glad you're all here because because you know I mean we got we got ourselves like a family classic right now, and and I'm happy to be able to share this with my good buddies, Monster Squad. All right, Nick Boxer, why don't you tell us about some Monster Squad? Have you seen a movie from the '80s? <laughs> Several. <laughs> this is one. Well, that's one no, way to uh, put it. A, gr a group of misfit kids band together and have to defend their town and the world from all the universal monsters who've combined forces and converged on their location. That's it. That's what happened. That's and the most awesome. Yeah. That is the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much easier than explaining Frankenstein Island. <laughs> <laughs> and then things happen in a linear fashion and when when things are introduced, other they make sense and have a, a lasting repercussion on the overall narrative. <laughs> See, it's, this movie is so different than what we usually. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, I there was a moment like I was actually as I was watching this, I watched it with my son Van and I was really you know, because because I thought it's time, it's time. You're a little young, but it's time to introduce you to the Monster Squad, and um, and yeah, for a I'll moment, see. ten. But and yeah, that's that's, that's a little young for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, they have to learn to smoke somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> What's the eighties? I mean, you got to learn about the eighties. Uh, I mean, it's 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 just it's part of it's part of life, right? Uh, but. But, I think it's important that he learns that smoking makes you look cool. <laughs> that's, that's the most important lesson to take away. And when it comes to sex, Brad doesn't count. That's uh, yeah. Fat kid. Steve. Yeah, like, Steve. It's, it's totally and, cool to call and if you got a, fat if kid. You got a can, if you got a friend with a glandular problem, it's okay to call him fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> the well, what was his real name? Horace, or what was it? Horace. Well, the, the bullies Jeez. call him fat kid. And then his friends call him Fat, oh, kid. fat kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but well, he, I mean, he gets parents, all the lines in this movie. Fat kid. Yeah, but these these guys, but as friends, these guys are the kind of friends that that we are. You know, if you think about it, I mean, we're just we're just like older <laughs> versions of these guys. You know, <laughs> except we don't necessarily know if one of them was a fat kid or not. But, uh, oh, <laughs> and we have nowhere. We've never had a clubhouse that cool no no Man, that's I want to re sure. rebuild that like i want to i, I want to like duplicate that as a in, the, in my backyard that the monster squad clubhouse that's and, amazing and i want to know like where where do you go because i'll tell you where i live there's no haunted houses around like there's there's no houses with like scary german guys uh yeah there is <laughs> dude you're close to uh the uh, purple pink people house, or pink well, people. but the, but it, but that's not like haunted. I mean, that that looks like a normal house. It just happens to have random pink people in front of it, or in the side of it. But it but it doesn't look like it's a random haunted house. Mummy wrapped, mummy wrapped pink plastic people. Are they the there? A bunch of them. We need to put those pictures up on uh, on our Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have to yeah. Send, send send me a couple of those pictures. We can put them up on, I on so, Instagram. I'll, I'll and ask some questions. I think this one's <laughs> got to be haunted. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it's not it's not classic looking haunted house. That's for sure. But um, no, but I what I love about this movie is everything in it reminds me of when I was a kid. 
Because I remember being scared of the house down the block that was a little disheveled and you didn't know who lived in it. There was a haunted house in my neighborhood when I was growing up. The yeah. one that was haunted. Yeah. I but mean, you got a real sense of the you, world. You're, you're, saying, you're saying, Stan, you're saying there's no haunted house in your neighborhood. Ask your son, Van. <laughs> Ask Van to do if, 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 if there's a – he's the one who would know. Well, that's yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if he's uh, if he's got any uh, haunted houses around for him. But you know, because because you look at so many. Well, you'd movies have to like let that. him out of the basement first. <laughs> <laughs> My own. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to leave the basement? We watch good movies all the time. There's <laughs> there's, a, there's a monster in my closet, Dad. <laughs> that's, that's right. Look, there's no monster in here, was it? I just waved the door open. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. yeah, it was good times. It's <laughs> yeah. it's interesting because this movie is not not typical of our usual uh uh Hoogaloo type movie. That said, but, but we get one of these every year. Like like I know. Like uh, first first year it was blood sport and year two it was Revenge of the Nerds and maybe even up the creek. And and then this year's this. We're one where it's like we know like the concept this year is 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 takes on the universal monsters. So werewolves, Frankenstein, Dracula, you know, wolf man or whatever, wolf guy in this case. Like, so it's a takeoff on that. We get one of these every year. And it was one where I can't remember who actually nominated because we just got to pick two movies. But when it was up, there was a discussion. Is it KFEB? Is it Boogaloo enough? And it's kind of one of those ones where it's like, yeah, but we kind of have to do it. I mean, it's got, you know, all the elements that we just couldn't ignore. Well, having – I was so excited because uh, because when you're talking about having a mummy – and and this mummy wasn't an Asian mummy, so that was a positive, um, you know. But it's got Wolfman and it's got Dracula and it's got Frankenstein's monster. But it had Gilman, and I was just I loved Gilman. Like what a great looking uh, character. Stan Winston obviously obviously does an awesome job every time out. But Gilman was great because there's just these moments where it's just like, <laughs> and I wasn't even sure. But it's like, I guess, yeah, he's really struggling to breathe when he's out of the water. It's good, I, good looking the, character. The monsters look so good in this. Yeah, except for except for Dracula. Um, True. Yeah, he's he's not really. But I mean, I love it. They're all recognizable. But like even Dracula, it's like okay, that's a classic Dracula. But they didn't go and make a a, a Lugosi ripoff. Like he doesn't look that much like him, and he doesn't talk with him. He doesn't have the accent, you know. Like so, they were kind of um, like it's it was really well done. Like the, the monsters, and that's the thing is this movie is with a few small exceptions, it is still a smaller budget movie, but it was a mainstream movie and. It is largely well done, and it it will be interesting to see how it scores. Um, I don't really even know to discuss the movie, how we do it, because we can't go right in and start jumping around like we normally do, where we're just like, what, what, what? But And, and, and going through the plot almost makes no sense, because anybody can almost probably watch this on video on demand or, <laughs> or or Netflix or Amazon. Like It's out there, right? And a lot of people have already seen it, so going through the plot doesn't even – really make a ton of sense well and, and it's so uh, i'm not easy. really even sure how to approach this. as as nick said it really is like every uh 80s movie oh, yeah. brought to life i mean it's it's just it just happens to have uh, like you know this is stand by me uh, to a certain degree with uh, with the universal monsters in it so yeah and, and, and in this day and age of you know of it and uh and and stranger things like it fits right in with those as well still in those more modern takes of it style wise in a lot of ways it fits right in and people would recognize it so if they haven't seen any if they're a little bit younger and they've only seen those recent films or recent movies or tv series and they haven't seen stuff from the 80s so much this kind of gives you it's that template still now van was very happy to that frankenstein's monster was a good guy like that uh, that definitely made an impact on him you know to, to know that uh, like to kind of fit in with the that you know, when you see Frankenstein's monster and you and you know him from you know from the original story then you know that he's not he's just misunderstood and this character had you know took that was misunderstood 
but was still basically liked kids and was friendly, and he stayed a good guy through the whole thing. And 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 that was definitely uh, a real positive. Like, I actually think that... Has he seen the original Frankenstein? Uh, no, he hasn't seen the original Frankenstein, but he's familiar, but he, with, he's familiar with the with the story. Yeah, so uh, you know, for him to to stay that way and to and to be a hero through the whole movie, that absolutely was uh, you know was a good thing. What what I actually really appreciate of this movie about this movie is all the characters sort of they they act like themselves. The original Universal. Uh, monsters it would have been so easy to do like a van helsing or something like that where these characters are all all new but no i mean you do have the frankenstein as a good-natured simpleton and dracula as the really evil guy and the wolfman as a cursed uh, a cursed but good guy um well he's good when he's a human yeah well yeah when he's a human but I mean, it, all, the characters stay true to the original forms. There's, there's no new ma- character development in this. But it's, but you're saying that's actually a positive in this case. Yes, in this case it is. The, it, it's like visiting old friends, <laughs> ra- yeah. rather than just who. Yeah, we we don't have to get to know these people. I, I can watch this movie back to back with the original. Uh, with the original Universal Monsters movies, and feel some sense of continuity. Yeah, and I think it's got that. Yeah. It's got that same feel of like the Abbott Costello Universal Monsters movies. Yeah, where a new generation was discovering these characters, and let's make something that you know bridges that of these 40s and 50s, and these like 30s to 50s characters, and then bridges that with what is now the VHS era would have been the, the people like you know, first experiencing these movies then. So yeah, it's, it's t- like touching on that. Uh, you know, it's, it's nostalgia, but it's also just kind of revisiting. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I, I, I actually think, I know this is, this is an odd one for us, but I do think, <laughs> I do think we should jump into the scoring. I mean, this is, this yeah. is just a movie that we're in, that we did enjoy. And I think a lot of it comes from the fact that that the nostalgia really played well to us as uh, as people. Yeah, and and so we should probably say that 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 as as uh, you know James Cotter there says every episode he lets us know how the the scoring is not based on objective quality. And in this movie, this this will hurt the scoring. Like this movie is <laughs> going to not score as well as it is. I would recommend this movie. I think everybody should see this movie. They'll they'll enjoy this movie, especially like I say, if you watch Goonies and you watched uh, Stranger Things or you, you know whatever. Somehow you missed it. I had missed this growing up. Like I never saw this until now. Somehow, somehow, I didn't even hear about this until like five years ago. Uh, it's actually one I missed as a kid too. My uh, my wife Lacey, it's like her favorite childhood movie. Uh, yeah. She used to like she watched this over and over like once a month when she visited a family friend, and uh, so I mean I had a movie like that. It was called Die Hard. Um, <laughs> so it was. A bit, <laughs> a I think I've heard of different. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a you know it's a, if you're a fan of '80s movies, I'll, you know take a look for that one. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's let us get it. Yeah. So thing. so yeah. So but again, just this probably won't score as high as it deserves. You know. Uh, it, 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 everybody should see this movie. It's not necessarily a KFEB yeah. classic, but it is a I, classic I, of its own style. And it is, and, and Lacey isn't alone. I, I know a lot of people. This was their childhood. You know, hell, uh, there's uh, a whole uh, documentary about how much people love this film coming out. Oh, oh there so you go. Neat. Um, what's it called? Yeah, and oh, um, I think it's called Monster Kids. I'll have to look that up. Give me a minute. Okay. Sure. All right. That's cool. Well, you got okay, about we'll start. 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll start into the scoring. Uh, we rate these movies on five categories. As uh, as Jack mentioned, none of these are objective quality. And this is as we continue our search for the ultimate B movie. Our first category is called Schlock Appeal, and we start with Stan. Well, I, you know, I can argue a little bit of schlock in in the movie. I mean, anytime you, you include a bunch of... A bunch of the Universal monsters. I think I think it's fair to argue some of it. Um, there's there's a a great scene, of course, where 
where um, they need a virgin, and so they have to, they have to, they're like, <laughs> are you a virgin? And, um, and so during that scene, of course, the, you know, they get through, get through doing the, the, um, the enchant, the enchantment uh, where she has to read it in German, the incantation, and, and at the end, nothing happens. And it's just like, what, what, what? Well, are you a virgin? Well, I mean, this guy, but it didn't count. <laughs> and so, and just for, Steve. Yeah, just Steve. And for th- at that moment, uh, my son turns to me and he's just like, what's a virgin? And it's just like, <laughs> oh, oh, that's one of those, those points. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's all good. It's all good. He knows what a virgin is now. So th- see, Monster Squad told him what a virgin <laughs> helps him out. But um, so for me... <laughs> and and now he knows that if you're not a virgin, you're impure. That's, that's uh, right. So I'm glad that, that we're able to <laughs> broach the subject that I, way. Hey, look, this movie is, is, I mean, it's a PG movie. But I don't know if the PG... Th- I'm not sure if this was after or before. This probably was after PG-13. I'm actually yeah. kind of surprised it's not PG-13. It's actually... Uh, at very intense at times. Uh, there's a couple of times. I I worry less about uh, about monsters and violence and stuff like that. Mostly because because we watch a lot of those uh, of those makeup shows. So he really understands the concept of makeup and and how the movie movie making like this just isn't real. So that kind of stuff just doesn't really. I wasn't worried about your kid. Him. I don't. Care well, no. <laughs> Just it is kids. worth mentioning that people die in this movie. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Well, people like die in the real cop's life too. partner. He is toast. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he blew up good in that car. <laughs> and when they, and when they they and when the stake goes through the heart of you know uh, one of the vampire girls, it's very graphic actually. Yeah, it, it's an interesting one because the, there's moments because I I think its new rating is 14A. So it, it's it's interesting, like there's which is that, in Canada, yeah, where you are, yeah, that's right. I hate Canadians, you know that. Oh, that's fair. I, I hate you. So, <laughs> but at any rate, you know, so it's the idea of that of that. Um, it's it's childlike in a lot of cases, but there are those moments where it's just like you know taking a picture through the window of the girl wearing the bra and panties. Oh, and dude, like, this could have had some of the modifiers from previous season. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Yeah, there were a couple that would have applied. Yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, so for me, um, it's it's certainly not a schlocky movie. It's more of a good movie. But uh, due to a few things, I'm going to give it a five. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. There's a lot of quality here, but I also can't discount, like, all the universal monsters are here. This is a monster jam, and it was sold as such. So that's schlocky in its concept. It obviously was running on the coattails of every other 80s movie going out there. Um, So I'm just going to go a little higher than you. I'm going to go with a six. Yeah, I'm also going to go with a six on it. I, I do think it deserves kind of that, like, the the appeal is it's monsters, but it's old monsters. It's monsters that were B-movie monsters. It appeals to that part of, of like, it, so there is a schlock feel to it. Because, I mean, it would have been easier to do more modern monsters um, or takes on them. But they didn't. They went old school, and that really made it schlocky to me. So, uh, yeah, six is a good score. All right. Well, I'm only going to go with a four on this one, uh, but uh, I do like I like I love that all the Universal monsters are in this, especially Gilman, who doesn't get enough play. Uh, and uh, if Gilman had a class had a Gothic novel written about him, then uh, we'd see a lot more Gilman today. It's true. Uh, <laughs> but I, I I love the silliness that of all of the that all of them end up in this place for no good reason, like the. <laughs> The mummy is in a museum in this small town. The the uh, the wolfman just wanders through, and Frankenstein and Dracula fall out of an airplane uh, overhead. Yeah. They don't they don't See, land in this town. <laughs> and Gilman, there is no explanation of <laughs> Gilman. No, he's just, he, all he's, of just there. he's just there. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently, just access to. Access to swamp water um, close to this town. And I don't swamp, know if we're told where this, this swamp town is. Swamp water isn't really connected to anything. From what I <laughs> yeah, he's just in. He's in like a pond. 
It just happens <laughs> to be the pond that the swamp that the Gilman lives in. All right, next category is called More Heart Than Budget. Well, I mean, uh, this movie actually had a, I mean, it had, had a decent budget of twelve million dollars. Uh, to me, it's got a. I found that it had a ton of heart. I I thought that the characters, you know, a different kind of heart than than most of our movies, but like from an actual, uh, you know, heart perspective, you know, like Frankenstein's monster, totally great. Uh, I'm going to give it a seven. You know, I'm going to go a little higher just because you know, there was no reason to make this movie other than people love these monsters and they wanted somebody behind the scenes just wanted to do something with them. Um, I, I think that I, I think it, this movie was all heart and it just sort of pushed itself into fruition. Cause I mean, you have to convince somebody at universal to lend you these monsters. They were too close to the originals to be like, Oh, we'll just have like a Frankenstein esque monster. These guys look like the originals. You have to, there's properties involved and somebody really wanted to make this movie. So yeah. Yeah. I'm seven. also going to go, I'm, I'm also going to go seven or what were you going to say? Sorry. I, I didn't actually hear Nick say a number. Yeah. You just said a Sorry, little seven. <laughs> oh no. no Cause, cause uh, <laughs> Stan had said seven. You said, I'm going to go a little uh, higher. Sorry. A little <laughs> higher. I meant eight. I just got seven <laughs> stuck in my head. Eight. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. <laughs> this movie's all heart. Like this movie only works because it has so much heart. Like that's what that's what makes it not just some cheap ripoff movie. It's a lower budget. It's still a B film. It's a theatrical release, but it's a low budget theatrical release. Uh, they did a lot with that budget. The monsters look great. Um, yeah, I mean it's all it's all heart. So I, I think a seven is is I mean it's not the type of heart like was only I'm only scoring only a seven because it's not in the in the spirit of what we thought of the category being created for. All right. Well, I'm everything you said, but ten. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think I agree that I think this this movie none of this movie makes any sense if, without the heart, and it's uh, it's Goonies with the Universal Monsters. I love it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bump mine to an eight. <laughs> be, be, no, because because um, scare it's it's scary German guy um, when he turns out to <laughs> be German. like like a good like just a really nice guy who likes feeding them pie. And I'm talking specifically of one moment where when he closes the door and you see the, the tattoo from the, you know, from the, from the work camp. And yes. like that, oh, that, there. that got me right in the feels. Yeah. It was like, Oh, you know, yeah, you knew monsters. Really big. Oh, yeah. that like, yeah, so it's, right they, there, there's a line uh, like, they, you he understands monsters or something like that yeah. right before the, yeah. that reveal. Yeah. Like that moment right yeah, there, like, like that deserves boy, more, know, another point. That's it, right? He, they said to him, one of the kids says, boy, you know a lot about monsters. And he goes, yes, I suppose I do. And then he closes the door and you can see that tattoo from the, from the, uh, you know, camp and, and yeah, that really is like a pretty, that was a pretty amazing moment. They, they managed to put that in there. And the fact that they thought of that is really, yeah, quite incredible. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bumping mine right. up, but uh, Jack's not. Yeah. Into the next category that we call what the fuck moments. All or in right. a PG-13, what the frig moments. Yeah, what the frig moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's, I, I mean, uh, really, other than them landing randomly and getting called by Dracula, there's a couple of moments with the, with the amulet that were, that were kind of, kind of funny and weird i i love the the where the amulet was and how it was just all chock full of crosses and garlic and stuff like that it was uh it was really good but i'm still going pretty low so i'm only going to two uh yeah this is pretty hard to to bump it too high i I'm, I'm i'm going with a four um just because the wacky concept and i can't believe this thing really got made at all um <laughs> But it it makes linear sense, which in our little uh, <laughs> world is a rarity. So there's no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, having the fact that I've watched this directly after watching Frankenstein Island is like asking your brain uh, your brain to take a hard left turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know? Um, are you going to, we mentioned it quickly, but uh, I don't want to take it from you because I have another one. But uh, Jim, is is the, the, the closet scene in just, your no, WTF? Just, go. just Just go, yeah. Because, I mean, that scene really is, it is a kid, a little kid who says there's a monster in my closet. His dad walks in and his dad is like, there's no monster in your closet. Blah, blah. Or basically, first off, he shows up. He's like, hey, monsters, get out of your closet. He's like, there, are they gone now? And he's like, no. And then he, they open that up and the, the back is, he, the gag is he has his back turned and the mummy is in there. So he never sees the mummy and he yells at the kid and then he closes the door on him. And I'm sitting there going, okay. Number one, how did the mummy get in there? Though he leaves through the window, so he came in through the window. Uh, why is he in there? Why does he not do anything? There was no purpose for this. And then I looked at this movie, and it's only like what, like 120 minutes long, or something like that, or 125. <laughs> it's 82. And, <laughs> yes, yeah. like it's 80, and, it, and it's and it's really obvious that this scene was put in after the movie was made because they it was too short. It like, was a good gag, thing. though. It's a good it's gag. Not yeah, a, it's, not a, it's not a bad gag, but there's no reason. There's it doesn't move the plot along. It doesn't move the characterizations along. It doesn't. It's just five minutes of something happening for no reason whatsoever, right in the middle of the movie, um, <laughs> that, that, and it slows down the movie. If it wasn't a good gag, it's good enough gag that it does. But but I'm like, but if that kid had something that he wanted that he was stealing from his closet, maybe. But there's nothing. There's no reason for the mummy to show up in the closet or to leave the closet. Why did it he get in there? Establish- when did he get in there? What's the- nothing? It nothing. does establish that nobody believes this kid, which <laughs> happens la- again later in the film, which is again just a nothing gag. But I enjoyed all of it. Well, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it, but I'm saying as a WTF, it ca- counts. There's also is the bit where the older kid—I can't remember his name again now. What is it? Rudy. Smoke- Rudy. Rudy. It is Rudy. Okay. Where Rudy is looking out the window at that that kid's uh, the one kid's uh, older sister. <laughs> And and he's looking at her, and he's in the middle of a sentence, and then it cuts back to him, and and it, finishing the word, it cuts off in the middle of the word, comes back him finishing the word, and he's no longer looking through the through the thing. He doesn't have a pair of glasses or or uh, binoculars anymore that he was using. He doesn't have a binoculars, and he's talking to them. And you're like, that is one of the most WTF worst <laughs> edits I've ever seen yeah, all the time that's... in my life. Did anyone else? <laughs> Every time that kid was on the screen, just think, it's really too bad Corey Feldman was too old to play this role. Oh, too big. Because this kid was, he was in junior high, remember? But he looked about 25 to me. So, uh, yeah, anyways, I got a five on this. Because there's not a lot, but those two are are significant. (laughs) All right, I've only got a three on this one, but there's a couple of just... I think tonally is the thing that's the most WTF for me is that this is such a, like I said, it's like Goonies with the Universal Monsters. And then in the last five minutes, two of the Monster Squad just flat out kill the monsters in cold blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the, like Rudy shoots the werewolf and the werewolf <laughs> turns back into human and says, thank you, and then dies in front of him. And Rudy's walks it off. He is fine. Yes, it's just like, <laughs> oh, and, and has, has a great line. He <laughs> clip, racks the shotgun and says, my name is Horace. That's not Rudy, but that's what Horace does, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, tell, wrong. tell it, wasn't, it wasn't Horace. Sorry, I, wasn't Rudy. you were talking Wolfman Death, I was talking Gilman Death. All but, right. But Gilman, okay. okay. Like, All it's right. It's the same thing for Gilman. That, yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, Gilman gets shot by, by, by Horace with a shotgun. <laughs> and again, he's just like, I'm good. That's he really, what, the kids, are, <laughs> he's, he's 10, I think. Ten, yeah. you, would you give your kid a shotgun when he know how to use it there, uh, Van? Van, uh, would he know how to use it, Stan? You're asking the Canadian? I mean, if we should be asking. I'm sorry, my mistake. <laughs> That's true. No, I, I, I most I'm definitely sure. wouldn't give him a shotgun. <laughs> I wouldn't give it to him even if he knew how to use it. <laughs> I yeah. wouldn't give it to him especially now, if he knew how to use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> With the portal and the violence in the last scene... I would have not been surprised if Ash jumped out with his chainsaw. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Actually, a Monster really Squad bad. versus Army of Darkness. I'm showing up day one to that movie. Hey, man. <laughs> the, the, the killing of the, the wolf guy was really bloody as well. Like, uh-huh. 
you know, the not the one where he was shot, but the one where he blows apart. <laughs> I mean, it comes back together, but that is bloody and graphic. And the and the, and the scene where the uh, the where Fra- Frank or uh, no, so Dracula lifts up the little girl who's like four or or whatever, That's and like test. screams. Pardon me. That's an intense scene. Yeah. Yeah, like the way he's he's serious. And that's scary. Like that was like, whoa! That's is the intense, the violent intent that he screams at her with when he shows the fangs and everything. It was like, dude, that's like a little kid. So yeah, sorry, right. still your turn, isn't it? Did you ever score it? I did. Oh, yeah, I, gave it a, it I gave it a three, and we're moving on to what we call memorable moments. Well, for me, um, this this one is is again completely joined by my son because. As we watched it, there's one scene that has now become a favorite of ours, and, and we repeat it, when they're, when they're in the house, and the wolf man jumps out in front of them, and the one kid yells, kick him in the nards! And mm-hmm. so, well, they had earlier talked about wolf dong, yeah, so wolf they had dong, said it that's, up. That's, no, we're not wolf dong, it was wolf dork. Wolf dork, was the yeah, wolf dork. That's, why the, that's why the wolf man has pants. Yes. Wolf, wolf, wolf dork. Wolf dork. Yeah. And so so they kick him in the nards and he kicked him in the nards. My son laughed his freaking ass off. <laughs> that is the most famous Wolfman's yeah. Got Nards is is the the line that when I first heard about this film, that's the one what I heard. Like that's the famous moment. And it uh, clearly still works. Oh yeah, it totally it totally works. And for his brain it it was the shit. And so um, for me, I'm going to an eight on uh, memorable moments for Wolfman's Got Nards. And uh, and I'll note actually that the documentary that uh, Nick mentioned earlier is called yeah, Wolfman's Got Nards. I was saving it. <laughs> I was saving it, and it was finally my turn. And you, <laughs> and you I nard and block. I stepped on your ass. Nard block. <laughs> oh, oh, that hurt. I, I oh, just, I've been nard blocked. I had assumed you had completely forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's a safe assumption. No, I, this is a quotable, quotable movie. My name is Horace. Uh, Wolfman's got nards. And, I mean, just memorable scenes. Some of the cinematography in this is gorgeous. I mean, when you have all the kids walking into the sunset with Frankenstein's monster holding hands, that's a great shot. Uh, that's a great shot. Um, yeah, I, I, there's so much beauty in this movie. I, I think it's a variable, very memorable movie. So yeah, eight. Yeah, and I'm going even higher. I'm going with a nine. Like this is definitely, it's not just Wolfman has Nards. It's, it's little like you mentioned some of those little things. I think the first time Rudy shows up and it's a playoff of all the, all the the cool kids, the greaser kids who are like a little bit, you know, antisocial and and they show up in their car and they're instead he shows up on a bike and lights a cigarette off the side of his bike. And that's the first <laughs> time you see him. It's like that's very memorable and it's such a play on so many things and or the, the little girl when she has Frankenstein and they're all running away and she goes. And she's like four years old. She goes, come on, guys. Don't be chicken shit. I laughed my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> you know? Or when Rudy's in the treehouse. And, and and they're all up in this treehouse. And and he turns and looks at the dog and goes, how's the dog get up here? Like very casually. <laughs> they moved it away. So awesome. That's, that's a great line. I, I got a oh. nine for this. Very strong. <laughs> uh, I'm also doing an eight on this. It is a, it is a quotable movie. Wolfman's Got Nards is such a it's it, that's a real pop culture phrase <laughs> uh, and it, but it has it really has great dialogue overall like it has it, there's really good one liners i love how they describe one of the the teacher that they won't pay attention to at the beginning they said he said you know oh, yes. my buddy says that she's boring and has an odd shaped head but i don't say that <laughs> <laughs> cat head <laughs> i i love i mean i love shane black and uh i think he's a great writer and so i think a lot of that uh shines through here there's some huge continuity holes and plot holes oh, in oh, this for sure but but, but because sure. of the way it is you're just willing to like let it go and, yeah, and I, just I, enjoy I, yourself i i don't I think that. this movie has any more hot plot holes <laughs> than like a movie like goonies yeah which is made by Spiel, steven spielberg uh this no is the I, genre I there's going to be ho- plot holes you can drive a truck. <laughs> well, there is some, for sure. But. All right, so that was an eight, and we're into our last category called Crazy Concept. Well, 
you know, as as Nick mentioned earlier, it's it's kind of every eighties movies, every eighties movie like that uh, balled up into one, only with the Universal monsters. Uh, so I think that that's that's worth a three. I think you're discounting the value of the Universal monsters. That is pretty crazy. To well, let's just add the Universal monsters into this generic type 80s formula. I think that's crazy. I'm not going to go much higher, but I am going to go higher with a five. Well, and the thing is, though, is that we're in an era. Like, I don't know how this would play today. I do think they should remake this. I think it'd be perfect. But like, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure to kids. Because back in in the time when this was on the air, those movies were still on TV fairly often, and the parents had seen them on TV. And there was, like you say now, Van has never seen this. Whereas, you know, like there was a generation where when these this these kids were, you were more familiar, I think, with the the classic original takes on those Universal Monster Heroes. But also the parents of the kids who would take this to the or would go with the kids to the film, they had definitely grown up seeing those movies played regularly themselves so they would have had nostalgia uh you know on television because they used to be played a lot more and and so i i don't think it's as much of a stretch as as you do and I, it, it is some of a stretch it's still some crazy concepts to this whole thing but uh, I, I think anything more in a four would be um you know personally i think is too much so i'm gonna go a four all right i i'm gonna go really low on this i do think it's uh it, like I said, if, like the Abbott and Costellos, it's um, there's enough interest in these in these characters that we can sell them to them again. Uh, so I'm only going to go a two on this one. All right, that brings us to the end of the voting, and we go into our secret modifiers. Every season we have six secret modifiers. This movie has one of them. It has a text page opening. Again, my favorite modifier. I, I love because it's such a universal monsters thing to have yeah. the, the text the text on the on the screen at the beginning of the film. Uh, that gives us a final score of fifty eight point five, and uh, interestingly, fifty eight point five means it's po- only point five higher than Revenge of the Nerds and one higher than Bloodsport, which means that this seems to be really the zone for the mainstream films. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's a, that's a really small margin for, for the, like, the, really the most mainstream films that we've done in the, in the series so far. I have to say it scored much better than I thought it would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's, I think there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of positives, and I think we're, you know, our nostalgia kind of drove high, slightly higher scores. I guess I think, our I, think, for, I think we're forgiveness. I think none yeah. of us wanted to shit on this movie. It's still, <laughs> it's I think true. that how also can, helps. How can yeah, you? Yeah, I sure. mean, yeah. All right. Well, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us on the internet there, Jim? All right. Well, our podcast sponsors, We Talk Podcasts, uh, have most of the presence. So you can follow them on Facebook and on Twitter. And you can go to wetalkpodcasts.com to catch up on the Octagon and any past episodes. We have the, the Octagon list there tells you the rating of uh, the rank of every movie we have reviewed thus far. And you can click on the title and it'll take you to the page for that movie. So uh, as you catch up to us, you can go back and listen to uh, to one's uh we always recommend you, you see the film, then listen to us, because we are going to spoil the bejesus out of these films. <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt about that. And and after I'm sure after listening to us on some of these films, your des- your desire to, if you haven't seen it, does go up. I would hope. Yeah, it, I know. I should. would say watch it before you listen, then listen to our show, then watch it again, um, and, and then, watch it with us in the background. Turn off the sound to the show. Yeah, yeah, that that's a, yeah. In most of these movies, the the one hour of our podcast matches up perfectly to the. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you can find us on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo and use the hashtag Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. All right. Well, you know we've we've taken sorry. What was the hashtag? Kung yeah. Fu Electric Boogaloo. Hmm. Man, I could remember that. Yeah, yeah, write it down. I hope so. All right. You know, we, we've taken a little bit of a left turn into Monster Squad, but we are coming right back in line next episode with Frankenstein Conquers the World. We got some more crazy for everybody's ears coming. coming who, uh, who picked um, Monster Squad, by the way? Whose pick was it? 
That was I Nick's. believe it was mine. It was Nick's. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Nick. Uh, unless, you, uh, unless you ask my wife, and then it was mine. <laughs> she, she, was, <laughs> she was thrilled that Monster Squad was going to be in the mix. So, <laughs> oh, okay. If we if we ever talk to Lacey, we'll we. In other words, you're saying uh, it was a good night in Jim's house. <laughs> it, yeah, we had, we had a nice evening watching Monster Squad, <laughs> lighting some candles, getting the fireplace going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. All right. Well, I think it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> Wolf door. <laughs> Wolfman. Kick him in the nards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are ready to move on. So, for my friends. They should have made a sequel to this and called it Revenge of the Nards. Revenge of the Nards. <laughs> oh, oh. I'll, I'll die. Now it is definitely time to move on. So, for my pals Nick and Jim, and I guess Jack after that joke, I am 8th Dance Stanadu. Oh, thank you for listening to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo Monster Chiller Horror Theater. See you again. <laughs>